Permanent Secretary for uh, Water, Waste and Environment, Mr. Wycliffe, um, the uh, Senior Sub Director Policy, Director Waterways, Director Environment is not here with us today, but I'm um, sure she's watching us from the virtual world that we are now are used to after thanks to COVID-19. Our team, Waterways and Environment, media personnel, ladies and gentlemen, beloved Naka to you all. Uh, as saluted to by PS, we all, uh, the senior management, are quite honored to be here today to announce the Kiwa Initiative Award administered by IUCN to the Ministry of Waterways with support from Ministry of Environment, a program that is being funded by governments of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, EU, and IFD, the Agency Franchise the Development. So this Kiwa Initiative I think it's the first time the Skiva Initiative came up, jointly funded by the Australian, New Zealand, Canada, European Union, and um, Agents for Energy Development, EFD. This award is a substantial effort towards coastal erosion management and environmental rehabilitation using nature-based solutions. As alluded to by P.S. Wycliffe, these solutions, these response to problems are not typical textbook solutions. And therein lies the difference between, you know, quality, forward-looking graduates or workers or staff. Your ability to look at the existing <coughs> stock of resources you have and see how best you can deliver onto and the maximum you can deliver with this given outlay of resources. And as P.S. Wycliffe uh, mentioned, it was some years back that, you know, after our trip to Tavuni, we opened a, um, uh, a uh, concrete uh, seawall, uh, hard structure seawall. It was about, uh, I think, 150 meters of seawall, uh, which was um, the commission by Honorable Prime Minister, worth $1.2 million. We came back, sat in this same boardroom, and said, I invited PS and others, I said, look, um, how many of these we will be able to do? We need to protect close to 160 villages with about 103 seawalls that we need to construct. That's number of seawalls, meaning some seawalls will protect two or three villages. So where will we get this? Uh, some seawalls are 400 meters, so which means, you know, uh, close to $3 million. <laughs> So where will we get this 200 million or so? Of course, government has said that and is uh, demonstrating progressively government every year is allocating money to construct seawalls. In those days, we used to construct one or two seawalls per year. Uh, $2 million allocation, $2.5 million, $1 million. And we said, no, we can't continue this way. And we need to look at how we could, you know, uh, address better and in a speedy manner. But there's other bothering and lingering issue that we had in our mind is that we are replacing a ecology, a ecological system, with a concrete seawall. We are, instead of as a Ministry of Waterways and Environment instead of building an ecosystem or replacing an ecosystem, we are actually permanently closing off an area which used to be a thriving ecology, a place where the community was getting these you know, uh, resources, a, a place where you know, biodiversity was flourishing. And there we came up with an idea of responding to a problem caused by nature by using the nature itself. And that started with the first nature-based seawall in Viro village in Lebuka. And we were, internally we were a bit worried and concerned that whether it will be accepted by the so-called, you know, the group of hardcore engineers, the civil <laughs> engineers. And we were worried whether the, you know, it will be accepted by the community who are used to a physical hardcore cement seawall. And we were worried whether development partners will follow suit and accept that and fund us. 
here we are. Today, international organizations, development partners, countries are asking for our design, are writing to us. So ladies and gentlemen, today, this award of nearly Fijian 700,000, which was um, uh, initially uh, <coughs> drafted by <coughs> director policy, uh, work by uh, peers, directors, uh, of course, I also had an input in that. Um, it is there to assist our government to protect and increase the resilience of vulnerable coastal communities to climate change by constructing a nature-friendly climate adaptation structure. This is critical to minimizing the impact of increased coastal wave action by protecting human lives, protecting vital infrastructure, reversing biodiversity loss, increasing food security, and controlling pollution due to climate change induced sea level rise and escalating severe climate events. Today we are joining forces with IUCN and the QA initiative to take environmental rehabilitation a step further by committing to restore damaged coastal regions using nature-based seawalls, including mangroves and petriva grass technology. The good work carried out by the ministry has enabled a widely acclaimed solution to be taken a notch higher. Ladies and gentlemen, as government has said a number of times, that relocating communities is the last option for the government. They're not objects that you pick them up and put them in another place. They are people who have evolved in that particular location. Their ancestors were born there. They have a cultural, traditional, religious ties to that particular place. We will do everything, as this government has said a number of times, to protect the communities wherever they are. If the situation is that bad that the place cannot be, if the place is below sea level and cannot be protected, and then the government will look at relocating those communities. So ladies and gentlemen, whilst we are heading into uncertain climatic patterns, the ministry has shown itself to be an agile, futuristic outfit through this specially designed model of nature-based solution. It is our priority to strengthen our adaptation efforts and promote nature-based solutions in restoring degraded coastal areas. While the government of Fiji, through the Ministry of Waterways, has prioritized hard interventions in coastal systems in most vulnerable areas, and is fully aware of its cost and aesthetic relevance, this project encourages the incorporation of nature-based seawall. The Ministry of Waterways has deployed and will continue to innovate and progress its efforts through the various nature-based solution tools. These include both hard and soft solutions like beach vegetation, vetiva grass technology, sea grass, mangroves, and coral planting options. Ladies and gentlemen, numerous research have shown that over the last you know, four or five decades, we have lost thousands of acres of mangrove. And it is progressively and bit by bit area by area, community by community, if we can mobilize themselves, we can restore this lost mangrove uh, ecosystem and we can increase mangrove. As you know, that mangroves are known for carbon sequestering. It is known that they uh, sequester carbon four times more than any other forest system and they help in Fiji's quest to decrease the carbon footprint. Ladies and gentlemen, today, with the assistance of the Kiwa Secretariat, we are sw swinging our NAP and NDP policy directions into action. We are also providing our commitment to safeguarding and protecting vulnerable Fijians. With this funding, we, are planned, we have planned to protect six communities, six sites, three sites on Mali Island, the three villages, Somosomo village, Navola village, and Navolao number one village, which are in danger of basically eroding off. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, this funding will rehabilitate an approximately 1.6 kilometer of the vulnerable coast, a total of, of 1.6 kilometers of when you add up these six communities. The NBS seawall will include bouldering and backfilling, as well as planting of mangroves as a primary defense in the forefield and vetiva grass in the backfield to help prevent erosion. The Ministry of Waterways has identified a total population beneficiary of 1,500, of which 45% are our women. Ladies and gentlemen, the project is community centric and gender inclusive. The villages will provide raw materials, boulders, and backfill soil material, and labor force for the planting of mangroves and vetiva grass. Moreover, during the planting stage, communities will be trained and mobilized to take a leading role in protecting the communities from future climate events and protecting this nature based solution seawall. So, again, the cost of this project for the six sites is 700,000 fiction dollars. So, ladies and gentlemen, while the government is doing its part in securing the livelihoods of the vulnerable coastal communities, I urge potential partners from the multilateral development banks, the private sector, NGOs, civil society groups to partner with us and protect Fijian lives and their property and household and infrastructure. Our government has stated time and again that we will protect all Fijians no matter where they are. And when it comes to external shocks such as climate change, it's everyone's responsibility to take ownership of this local, national, regional and global problem. We cannot say that since we are not affected today, it is not our problem. We must all act now in our own small ways. With these words, I thank the Kiva Initiative and the donors behind the Kiva Initiative, the government, and IUCN, and our hardworking team behind this successful hope. Thank you. Naka.